Rescue mission day 18. And the same recording session I recorded last, uh, yesterday in. Oh boy. Oh, they had to clear off the rest of the space. To fit more captains. And also, because this is the same recording session, I'm going to have to come up with four new voices. Yippee! After many castaway requests, we're adding even more space to the rescue command post. Hopefully, this will ensure the castaways all stay comfortable while they are here. We have enough space now that I'm sure we can fit anyone else we rescue while we're on this planet. Everyone you've rescued pulled together to give this to you as a way of saying thank you. I believe it's more plastic. Look at us. We have a lot to talk about. And no leaflings, so I can't cut the episode short with the night exposition. I kind of want to talk with Imperfect Self first. I don't normally do that, but we're doing it today. We've talked to so many, uh, or we've, we've seen so many new enemies, one of those being, I mean, the legendary Water Wraith, that I gotta know. Find 100. So we know there are at least 20 more enemies. Oh, we saw the fiery bullblax, and I just didn't even make note of it. Oculus Vulcanus. When I see this ra blazing beastie, I get a rush of excitement. It's easy to lose track of time while staring fixated at the flame and shrouded form of the fiery bullblax. Its appearance brings to mind ancient molten landscapes from an era before our earliest ancestors. It also looks like a burn victim. Don't think of that too much. Fiery Dweevil. That perfectly polished crimson color, like something hand-finished by a true master craftsman, is a feast for the eyes. This brilliant color is actually made through layer upon layer of very fine fibers being stacked together. Nature is the most skilled crafter. Venom Dweevil. Is this just another another different color of Dweevil? Not at all. You see, you see here, a fashion leader of the Critter world. There was once a purple one as well, but this year's trendy color is green. Be sure to bring protective gear to see it through. See it though. This skittering sweetie can produce a toxic gas if threatened. One moment, I'm consulting the tome. Because I seem to recall that the the purple the purple Dweevil, the poison Dweevil of Pikmin 2, is called the Caustic Dweevil. And I would like to check that fact. At the back of the Prima Guide is a Piclopedia. Again, I've used it many times. Uh, it is called the... No, the Caustic Dweevil is the blue one. It's the Munge Dweevil. Weird. I don't know... I don't know the reason for the change, but blue looks cool, I guess. These don't just mimic a growth of mushrooms for the fun of catching you by surprise. They also use the opportunity to spread poison around quite indiscriminately. But that's just this little darling's idiosyncratic method for catching its prey. We can learn from the way nature embraces such unique and varied creatures. Ooh, the moldy dwarf bull boar. Which means we're probably gonna find a normal one. Picture this scenario. Like this poor darling, you're conscious but no longer in control of your own body. Someone or something else has taken you over. A horrifying concept, isn't it? But what if the thing controlling you couldn't live if it didn't do that? Sometimes it's simply a matter of survival. Survival. I love it. You can have a bit of fun with this one by giving it a good poke and watching it wobble and sway through the air like a balloon. Poke the withering blowhog too much, though, and it may spew gas and fly off. It's a mischievous little darling, and the way it scatters flowers and cackles is quite charming. Lesser spotted jelly float. I guess they do have spots. I misinterpreted those as, as sparkle, but th they're spotted. Notice the elegant way it floats and its delicate transparency. The mystical sky blue color always catches my gaze and won't let go. Even when the drifting darling sucks up Pikmin, it doesn't eat them but gently envelops them. What a sweetheart. 
This lovely little fo floating critter sucks up food by stretching and contracting its body. It's hard to imagine such a graceful creature could be off this world. It would also be rather exciting to be sucked in with all of the treasures and Pikmin to float on forever. But if that really happened, I wouldn't be of this world for much longer either. The Wally Hawk. With a distinct pallor, almost like it was painted with white face paint, it gives off an air of a performing mime. This cutie can jump with quiet refinement, never moving its plump jowls at all. It's graceful and expressive in the most unexpected ways. The Master Hop! Wiggly elastic skin is the proper fit for this bouncing beauty. Slippery, smooth, and shiny, sleek. Its skin is soft as a baby's cheeks. Though you might want to be wary of getting too close or getting close enough to touch it. Just watching it move will make you yearn for skin that is more radiantly lustrous as well. The puckering blino. These form a group and then swim gracefully along together as though joined in an underwater dance. Are they a family or traveling for as a school? It might be enlightening to watch them with a submersible camera very quietly so they never notice. Click, click, click goes the crab's pincer as it tries to impress other crabs. The peckish aristocrat, aristocrab, with the biggest claw will also be the most popular. Doing popular means not having to work as hard to claw their way to the top of the crustacean hierarchy. The natural world is a lot like our world in that way. Pearly Clamp Clamp. On sandy hills or in the sea, wherever it may be, it never moves from its spot. It will sit and wait for someone to wander past. Someone being prey, preferably. Though it could also be someone who knows the value of the beautiful shell or pearl it holds nestled inside. Here we go. Amphibio Sapiens. The Water Wraith. The fact that it says it's active during the day makes me really scared. <laughs> a living thing is a living thing, even if it transcends our understanding. This unnerving creature is, an, is translucent and has no actual physical body to speak of. Yet, somehow, it clutches its rollers with zealous devotion. It's both eerie and fascinating. Don't you agree? Purple Pikmin. It's a profoundly heavy feeling, holding a living thing in your arms. It can be un overwhelming to realize this thing is really alive. That said, these purple Pikmin have a density to them that makes them extremely heavy. To hold them at all is difficult. But don't worry, they're strong enough that they can hold you. And that... We're caught up. Here we go! There are going to be a lot of treasures, and I gotta read them all. Vanishing Cookie. Is it possible for a cookie to be too delicious? It seems it is. This very cookie is so incredibly tasty that it vanishes almost as soon as it appears. Where it goes, nobody knows. But if you ever want to taste it, you'll have to move fast. Hope, hoop of Passion. Is your relationship missing the spark it once had? Are you stuck in a rut with the one you love? This hoop can help. Step through the glowing pink light and feel the passion return. The warmth that, sh that shines upon you is sure to remind you of the day you met. Greed Inducement Device The spine-tingling snap created by this object stimulates feelings of greed with anyone within anyone in earshot. The reasons behind this are unknown. Perhaps it reawakens a primal sensation hidden within the depths of our hearts, but this is mere conjecture. S secured Satchel Store your valuables in this bag for guaranteed peace of mind. Of course, that's easier said than done. Its defenses make it impregnable and virtually, virtually impossible to break. But that's only a problem. Uh, it's only a problem if you want to see your possessions ever again. <laughs> Traplin, what you see here is a cover meant to disguise a pit or trap, pr probably as a way to catch small animals. The people of this planet hunted in groups and used their cunning to develop the system. Another proud example of civilization and its infinite wisdom. 
Memory fragment. Bottom. Probably? Take a look at this strange treasure. Notice the gaps and protrusions. I'm certain they'd mesh well with something similar, yet different. Maybe this is some sort of key that opens something if you find the piece that makes it whole. Exciting. Juicy Gaggle. What a charming fruit this is. If it had a personality, I'd say it was cute and bubbly. Such a vibrant and passionate color as well. There's just so much to love here, but like love itself, this fruit is delicate, so treat it with care. It also looks nothing like the moon, which means it is incompatible with my interests. Insect Kondo. This fruit is a member of the plant family Bug Eaten Etenidae. As its name implies, the insect condo is po a popular abode for a number of insects. And who can blame the bugs for taking up residence here? This fruit is not just homey, but also quite delicious. Scaly Custard. It's like a food, and yet it resembles some sort of scaly beast. Let's agree that the initial impression is not a good one. And yet, inside awaits a rich, creamy culinary delight. Oh, you scaly custard, you. Many have judged you harshly, and for that, I am truly sorry. Dapper Blob. It looks for all the world like this fruit is wearing a jaunty hat. Ah, but the Dapper Blob's attire is be besides the point. It's the juicy flesh inside. Deeply sweet, yet delightfully bitter, too. That's the real star of the show here. A, fi a fruit fit for royalty. The Maestro of Flavor. After subsisting on a, the blandest of spacefaring food, I was not prepared for the symphony of flavors this dish unleashed on my tongue. The sublime melding of the top and bottom flavors. Truly, a culinary maestro orchestrated this masterpiece. And now I want sushi. Thank you, Pikmin, 3, Pikmin 4. Imp Emperor Whistle. Healing tones, are old, healing tones are old news. Well, greet the new trend. Super sounds of awakening. Air passing through the inner chamber plays a high note that acts as an acoustic refreshment. I'm very refreshed whenever I hear the the frog pond theme from Super Mario RPG, which is being re-released. I'm so excited. Monster Teeth. What enormous creature could these teeth belong to? And how did it come to part with them? The mind reels to imagine it all. Though this much we do know, the straightness and whiteness of the teeth suggest it had access to excellent dental care. If only they knew. The brush of foolishness. The soft bristles of this brush. How good they feel when scrubbing one's own back. How easy it is to lose yourself in the feeling. As they say, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Don't be fooled by this brushing vice. Know when enough is enough. What a, what a surprise it is to find that this lollipop offers no flavor at all. The odd protuberance is neither sweet nor savory, and yet, mysteriously, it lures one into sucking on it. Even more surprising, once you have, do have a taste of this flavorless lo lollipop, you are almost certain to feel so soothed that hours fly by in a satisfied haze. The false lollipop. Maternal Sculpture. This shape, it is at once familiar and also comforting. Surely this sculpture was erected to remind us that a mother's love is universal. Noble Goo. What a regal color this is. Noble and dignified in hue, it demands a solemn defer deference from all who gaze upon it. No wonder it's the color of kings, queens, and other folk of high status. I confess, I yearn to have a coat made of this color myself. You kind of already do. I mean, it's, I guess it's a suit. Ambi ambiguous goo. A bit of white, a bit of black. This color has made its its home halfway between the two. Some say it's an ambiguous hue that refuses to play, plant its flag. But maybe it just enjoys living between the two ends of the spectrum. Enjoying the best of both worlds. Mystery Squish Fish. What a mysterious new species of fish. Its body is transparent, yet inside it's full of a black liquid. Give it a good squeeze, and this liquid squishes right out. The liquid is tasty, although quite salty to be honest. Surely that must mean it comes from the sea. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Is it a sauce? Is it a candy? It's clearly some condiment, right? But I don't know what it is. A fish sauce, maybe? This disc vexes me greatly. I've analyzed it, meditated over it, and even given it a good whack or two, and I still can't decipher its purpose. But drawing upon my rather pr 
pro uh, prodigious treasure knowledge. I surmise it is either a piece of equipment used for gathering solar energy, or it is a weapon capable of reflecting light at troublesome beasts to scare them away. Quite useful either way. Crush Nugget. If a crush was a taste rather than a feeling, this fruit is where you'd go to experience it. This feeling starts small when you take that first bite and think, hmm, I'm not so sure I like it. But then you take another, and another, only to discover that you not only like the taste, but have come to love it. Suddenly you have a full-blown cr food crush on your hands. Just remember, many things in life are an acquired taste, so be sure to keep an open mind. This plant sucks the good things out of the grounds it grows in, to get its lumpy round shape. No, it doesn't look all that exciting, but I suspect the nutritional value is quite high. Also, we got one of these before, and there are two of them. There are duplicates now. Makes sense, I guess. I guess, obviously, we have the swords. This sword is known for bestowing on its owner the power to make allies of forced spirits. Clearly, it was given this odd green hue in anticipation of forced combat. The f color does seem rather bright for any forest we know of, but maybe forests here are very vibrant. It's not like we can see them. And thus we would know. But we don't know everything. Clearly this ancient sword was forged in battle on some sort of ice planet. Just look at it. The deep blue coloring is evidence that it once had powers that worked best in below freezing temperatures. I could swear all these eons later is still cold to the touch. Difficult Choice Totem. This tool can be helpful when one finds oneself faced with an especially hard choice. Simply roll the stone and leave the decision to fate. But when the roll ends abruptly, will you like the decision fate picked for you, or will you wish you decided it for yourself? Whew, that was a lot. Wow, that was a lot. Let's, let's go to something else, like buying something so I don't have to talk as much. Whew. <laughs> the treasure gauge plus. Now you can see the total amount and locations of the treasure. Time to go back and double check your work. That's really good. That's also really good. As is that. Anti-electrifier. In my mind. Hear me out. In my mind, I feel like I want to make Ochi immune to hazards before I am immune to hazards. Because think of how many times I can send him to deal with all of the, the electric traps, the poison traps, all of that. Whereas, I can't deal with them. I can't punch them. He can. And so making him immune to all this stuff, I think, is very justified. And that's what we're going to do. In fact, I'm very tempted. Yeah, no, we're going to make him tougher, too. Ochi just got a massive defensive upgrade, and we shouldn't have to be worrying about him falling in battle that much. Riba, riba, rabadoo! Chomp level three. Who, Master Chomp, was it you? Yes, it was, Ochi, it was you. Good boy, you can now kill anyone. Now you should be ready to learn an even more powerful skill. Big Chomp, what? What? <laughs> um, that seems really cool. I wasn't, hmm. That's tempting. Huh. That does seem very useful. Oh, by the way, here's our confirmation that Yellow Pikmin do, in fact, dig faster. But, oh, she digs faster still. It only costs one. Why not? Let's just cap that out. Robbie. You see me traveling through those caves at a good clip. Drop your latest report on me. I want to help you discover the spirit of the caves. You should be continuing your endeavor to explore even more of them. <clears throat> Hey, you're the one who saved me. Yeah. <laughs> Am I ever grateful for you, my friend? 
I came here to investigate this place from an archaeological perspective. See, I'm trying to reconstruct collapsed structures and really just investigate all sorts of <coughs> fascinating stuff. I plan to write a paper based on what I find. Everyone in my field is going to hit it big when I do. Huh. So, I heard you use raw materials to make bridges and, well, all sorts of things. Did I get that right? I did. That's great. <laughs> Just what I wanted to hear. The thing is, I'd love it if you could tell me when you do build something. Would you mind? Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't ask you to do it for free. No, no. I'll give you something to show my appreciation. Well, you, uh, you built? You, you have built things. Huh. Now, um, talk to me about their structural weak points. You know, things that we can fix in future iterations. Are you a professional builder? You, well, you, huh, you kind of are now. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later. Just don't, don't tell anyone about this. Just, just keep it between us. Hi, I'm Sai. I like to consider myself an expert on in habitat ecology. When I heard an unknown planet had been found, my first thought was, unknown planet means unknown creatures. Who could resist an opportunity like that? Not me, that's for sure. I applied to join the research task force as soon as I could. This probably seems random, but I have a request for the two of you. I'm currently researching the connection between the Pikmin and the whistles they respond to. I have loads of questions. Like, how many Pikmin can you lead at a time? And will the whistle still work on your Pikmin if your, whole, if your squad increases? And that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what I want to know. How about we just start with you telling me when your squad gets bigger, and, and, and we'll go from there. Wow, your squad is really big that's that's insane can it get even bigger by chance i i, I would love to see it oh it can it can that's a lot of pikmin yeah, that you can have in your squad i'm simply astonished at your abilities try taking on even more only one bulb away what about you once you make a decision you don't hesitate I appreciate your spirit and determination. I don't remember his voice, but apparently he had one. That's the reward for your determination. You definitely deserve it. Or is he the southern dude? I don't remember. There are too many now. I thought the southern the southern dude was over there. Yeah, the southern dude was over there, I think. Maybe? I don't know. Grr, that director, I can't believe I let him drag me out here. We'll film a new project, he says. It'll be amazing, he says. Please, we get here and the spaceship crashes. Seriously, I mean, sure, it'll make for great television. But still, if I wanted to start a shoot, uh, start shooting footage, I, and I don't have a crew, because my crew is still stranded. Oh, uh, I'm sorry I went off script there for a second. Aren't you th the one who rescued me? Okay, well, I'm Muggs. You might know me from television. I'm a reporter. Hello. Oh, hey, I just had a brilliant idea. Since you have a knack for rescuing folks, could you look for the rest of my TV crew, too? You will be handsomely rewarded. I don't know what kind of TV reporter speaks like this. I would, for one, tune out if I ever heard someone talk like this. Although it is very mimetic. They're meant for commercials, I would say. This isn't a voice that anyone uses. Just like this one isn't, isn't either. Wow, thanks, Zitan. You bloomed a whole lot of Pikmin flowers. They're so beautiful. Here's some plastic. This joke doesn't get old. It's not even really a joke. It's just the absurdity of me handing someone plastic for them doing a simple task. But you can't really be done, right? This world needs more flowers. Keep blooming. You gotta keep on blooming. Please bloom. Bloom more. Bloom 300 more, please. <laughs> I need the flowers, please, in my life. If I don't, I'll shrivel. I'll be like a dead flower. It'll be fall. The least 
good season because there are no flowers in it, and there's no sense of having any flowers from here on out, and I just... Believe it or not, we're going to take a brief step away from the serene shores and head to the hero's hideaway. I don't really have a reason for doing this other than wanting a change of pace and content. That's it. I'm just curious. We're going. <laughs> it's my let's play. I get to decide these things. And I am deciding that I am going to the serene sh or the what the whatever the, the place I just said. I'm going there. You can tell this decision is very thought out. It makes a lot of sense and it's fully justified. 